News Channel 13 brings you The Class of 2020 Speaks Presented by First New York Federal Credit Union Hannaford, Leah Cars, Siena College, and Snapple Hi, I'm Jerry Gretzinger one year ago, even six months ago, nobody could have predicted what would have happened over the last few months. The whole world has changed. Some semblance of normalcy may return at some point, but nothing can undo all the ways coronavirus affected us. We've seen school districts throughout the country put together commencement ceremonies designed to keep graduates away from one another. Imagine that. All those years of going to class with your fellow students only to have to keep your distance at graduation. But school districts are to be commended. The events they created were unique and amazing in their own way. But even still, it wasn't the day students expected. Consider the valedictorians working so hard to earn a spot on the stage and a chance to share a final message with classmates. Some still gave that address through websites or social media, but we felt they deserved still another opportunity to be heard. That's why we created this program, which is also an opportunity for all of us to hear from these incredible students and perhaps find some inspiration in what's been a pretty bleak time for the world. Every area school district in our area was invited to participate. 28 did, and we're proud to present every one of them. So listen in as the class of 2020 speaks. My name is Alexandria Thomas, and I'm the valedictorian from Cobus Richmondville High School. In his song, Life Changes, Thomas Rhett says, you never know what's going to happen. You make your plans and you hear God laughing. I've never heard a statement more true. In September, I had this year all figured out. I would play soccer in the fall, run track in the spring, maintain my grades, and enjoy my last year of high school with my friends. I never imagined that these things may not happen, and it just goes to show that life is unpredictable. On March 13th, the lives of all the students at Copa Scale Richmondville Central Schools changed. The teachers warned us that school may be closed because of the coronavirus, so we should take our binders home with us just in case. I like to be prepared, so I grabbed all of my essential materials and stuffed them into my backpack. My siblings and I loaded all of our belongings into my car, and by the time we were done, the trunk was filled to the brim with folders, binders, textbooks, and instruments. It felt like we were moving out, and I would soon come to realize how true that thought actually was. Later that night, my parents received a phone call announcing that classes would continue online for the next two weeks and that no one was to enter the building without authorization. We had suspected that this might happen, so it wasn't a big deal, but for students who had left their notes in their lockers, learning just became a whole lot harder. At first, I didn't mind homeschooling. I could wake up at 8.30, start my work at 10, and then finish by 3. That didn't last long though, because as soon as we got settled into the new routine, my teachers began assigning more work. Not only was I busy all the time, but I also couldn't see my friends. FaceTime and texting aren't the same as face-to-face -face interaction, and I began to realize why long-distance relationships are so hard. Two weeks turned into four, and then six, and then we found out that we would never finish our high school careers in person. All the hope I had for normalcy was extinguished. Life as I knew it had been altered, and not for the better. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Hindsight really is 2020. By staying home, we were protecting the vulnerable people in our communities. And no matter how much I would have loved a normal year, the lives of others are more important than our own selfish desires. The quarantine also taught me how to adapt on short notice, and it enforced the idea that we should appreciate what we have while we still have it. Circumstances can change in an instant, and things that were once guaranteed can vanish. It is important to enjoy the little moments and to be grateful for everything that we have. So to the class of 2020, congratulations. We've come a long way in four years and we will only continue to grow. There are sure to be more trying times in the future, but if we could get through this year, we can get through anything. After every storm, there is a rainbow and ours will bring hope and success. Although we never know what is going to happen, I have a feeling that life's changes will be good and the best is yet to come. My name is Alexandria Wyckoff and I attend Gobel Conesville Central School located in Southern Schoharie County. We have done it. We have completed high school during a pandemic when so many odds were stacked against us. Congrats to all of you, you've really earned it. As we move on to the next chapter of our lives, let us not forget or hate this year. We should learn from it and go after our dreams the same way we went through this year with determination. 
we need to remember that even though life wants to push us down and have us fail, we need to get back up and push back harder so we can get where we want to end up in life. This year has been difficult with the pandemic, the forest fires, Kobe Bryant's death, and the Black Lives Matter movement happening right now. So we need to bring light into the darkness and make this year a little brighter to look back on. If we do this, everyone is going to remember the class of 2020 as the students who pushed boundaries to great successes. To all our communities, thank you for supporting us throughout our school years. It helped us become the people we are today. Everyone in our communities has impacted us, even if it was only a minor impact. We've been given so much more support than past seniors, as well as our communities with birthday parades from the local fire department, signs standing outside the school doors, and members in the community adopting a senior, giving us gifts, and just letting us know that we are appreciated and being thought of. These final acts of generosity from our community will stay with me forever and remind me to be kind to those who might not have it as well as I do. It also showed me that you do not have to really know a person to show them kindness and that you care about them in the situation that they are in. To all our people work, who work in the school as well, thank you for teaching us, feeding us, and bringing us to and from school each day. Many of you have become second parents to us, the ones who we can talk to when we need advice or just a shoulder to cry in. You taught us critical life skills, how to handle tough situations, and talking to us about topics that have been in the news and our thoughts about them. We would have never been able to do this without you or your support. In conclusion, I would just like to say that congratulations to the class of 2020. This is our time to shine, so embrace it and then get ready for your next adventure, whether it be college, the workforce, or serving your country. It is our time to show the world what we are capable of, so let us do it in the best way we can. Enjoy your summer, because I know I will, as we get ready for the next chapter of our lives to begin. Hello everyone. Thank you all for sharing this special, momentous time with us seniors. We are all aware that these are not the usual circumstances, but that only gives us more of a reason to join together and celebrate the outstanding accomplishments of every graduate from the class of 2020. Each and every one of us has come so far, not only in furthering our education, but in the journey of discovering ourselves and becoming the outstanding individuals we are today. I am so glad to have the opportunity to speak for this amazing class who has proved to the world that we are all stronger than we think. I suppose I could give you all advice, maybe speak on how to live life to its fullest capacity. And again, I'm only 18 years old. What do I know about life? Instead, I merely hope to reflect on the lessons that we have learned in our adventure through childhood and high school. Although our time in school was only a short part of our journey, we have already learned many of life's most valuable lessons. We started in elementary school when we were all small, wide-eyed children, curious to discover more about the world around us, and always ready for laughter, playtime, and hugs. We learned the necessary things to thrive throughout our early years. Not to run with scissors, never to eat paste, and of course, how to finally tell the difference between the red crayon and the violet red crayon. However, the most valuable lessons came from the kind, gentle nurturance from our teachers and our interactions with each other. We learned how to share and play together, how to care for one another, how to identify how others were feeling and act accordingly, how to negotiate and compromise without an argument, how to lift each other up, and how to be good people. It was in these early days when we held each other's hands to travel through the hallways, made snow angels at recess, and designed the world's coolest creations out of Legos, that we truly learned from each other some of life's most important lessons. As we transitioned to middle school, we further grew and developed. We learned the important things to get through those wildering transition years. How to ask the seemingly scary big kids for help when navigating the hallways, that clicking our pens during instructions did not go over well with teachers, and how to perfect our power walk so we could slip into our seats right before the bell rang without getting trouble for running in the hallways. Yet again, the most essential skills that we learned came from our interactions with each other. We learned how to do projects and groups, how to give constructive criticism without offending one another, how to stand up for each other, how to safely navigate the new world of technology set before us, how to forgive and move on from meaningless squabbles, and how to be role models for younger students 
We had many joyful experiences, going to our first dances, getting our first cell phones, and having our first sleepovers filled with late night giggling. It was in these vital transition years that we slowly transformed from children to young adults. And lastly, we finally reached high school, our newest adventure yet. Our minds matured, giving us a new perspective in all our studies and extracurricular activities, allowing many of us to discover ourselves. Additionally, we gained the ability to fully comprehend the life lessons that we were being given. The importance of celebrating the cultures of other people, as it is the uniqueness amongst us all which makes this world so special, from our foreign language teachers, how to get messy, express ourselves, or ponder life, the beauty of art, from our art teachers, and make healthy lifestyle choices to allow us to be our best from our health teachers, how to rely on each other and be team players from our coaches and gym teachers, how to learn from the past in order to create a brighter future from our history teachers, how to identify patterns and relationships, giving us the ability to make accurate hypotheses and sound judgments from our math and science teachers, how to use the power of words to express ourselves, share the beauty of this world, or argue for what's white, right from our English teachers, the importance of doing our best, but not harboring on imperfections, because like music, life can never be perfect, yet we must celebrate how beautiful it is from our music teachers. We learned something special from all of our advisors at school, and we students taught each other too. We had so many wonderful times, and most importantly, we found for other friends and learned to become the outstanding individuals we are today. As we move on to new adventures, it is important that we remember all the valuable lessons and good times that we shared through school. Life can only be lived going forwards, but looking back and reflecting on how we became who we are is equally important. Congratulations to all of you in the graduating class of 2020. Never stop learning and remember that we can learn from all people. Go out there and follow your dreams, find your passions, surround yourselves with those who inspire you, and discover a career that makes you happy to wake up each morning. Make lots of memories, live life to its fullest, keep looking to the future, and never forget your wonderful school days. Greetings to my fellow graduates and to all the teachers, administrators, friends, and families who are here today in person and in spirit. My name is Colin Ingraham. Welcome to our graduation ceremony as the class of 2020 graduates as the most socially distant class in history. I'd shake all of your hands if they'd let me, but to social distance, I guess an air elbow will do. This is the first time I've seen so many of you since March, and I'm so glad I have this cap to wear to hide my quarantine haircut. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months, I started to wonder, am I starting my freshman 15 early? It's been so long since I've gone to class in normal clothes, so if any of the teachers ask, don't tell them I'm wearing my pajamas under this gown. So here we are, straight out of quarantine. Needless to say, the coronavirus was the worst senior prank ever, but out of it, we have become the senior skip day champions. While the end of our senior year and even this ceremony are nothing like we had planned, there are some other important lessons we've learned along the way that will help us in life. Don't worry, there won't be any online quiz on social distancing 101 today. At least, I hope there won't be. But it is a good time to review the highlights just in case. For instance, I will never forget how to sprint in a grocery store aisle during a toilet paper shortage or how to wear a face mask that will complement my bedhead during class. The biggest highlight of staying home is knowing that we've been saving lives in doing so, but a close runner-up is that I will never forget the first 20 seconds of my favorite songs through all this hand washing. As seniors, we couldn't visit college campuses in making our final decisions for the future. Our accepted students' days were held online and Zoom became our communication and window to the world. Who knew that when we became one of the first classes to get Chromebooks, we would need them as much as we have this year? This all just goes to show that some of the most important life lessons are not taught in textbooks. I've always liked math, which is why I decided I'm going to go to Siena College to become a math teacher. It sounds nerdy, I know, but something about formulas and equations have always been inspiring to me because they always have a particular outcome and always make sense. But if I've learned anything over the last few months, it's that history and life don't always turn out the way we expect. Many of us have also learned lessons in heartbreak. Some of us have lost loved ones that we couldn't visit. All of us have lost memories we'd hoped to share together. What I wouldn't give to have just one night to perform as Amos Hart with the Gilderland players in the production of Chicago. One day to celebrate with the athletes on their senior night. One senior art show, one senior picnic, one senior ball, but at least we have today as one more time all together. 
Uncertainty exists, but in the words of Dr. Seuss, sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple. Our new norm looks like this. I'll teach you in a room, I'll teach you on Zoom. I'll teach you in a house, I'll teach you with a mouse. I'll teach you here and teach you there, I'll teach you because I care. Thank you to our teachers, administrators, and parents for always teaching us because they care. Our 2020 vision of the future is bright because we are the resilient, the determined, and the Gilderland Strong class of 2020. Whether you're college bound, entering the workforce, or proudly going to serve in the military, you will make a difference and positive impact because you've proven your strength time and time again. While we are all on new and different paths, let's stay Gilderland United. We join the world in being the strongest graduating class ever. We are all in this together. The times we're living in are hard for many of us, especially knowing that our senior year was cut short in so many ways and there are so many things we'll miss about GHS. But from behind your masks, smile because of the amazing things we've accomplished together. So as we've transformed from being young teens to quarantines and go out into the world, let me leave you with this. The saying goes that hindsight is 2020. When the world opens up and the coronavirus is in hindsight, what will we remember about high school? Will it be how good we looked at prom and homecoming, or every game we won, every concert we performed, and every cultural fair table we visited? I'm going to remember that from six feet apart. We came closer together than ever before and rose above so many challenges in the process. We have made such a big impact here, and now it's on to us to continue making it wherever we go in the world. If that's what we could do right now, imagine the history we'll make when they finally let us out of here. No matter what, my fellow classmates, always remember this. Nothing is impossible. We are unstoppable. We are the Gilderland High School Class of 2020. We did it, and we did it like no others. Class of 2020, we made history. Thank you, congratulations, and stay safe, everyone. This is it. Guys, we made it. Being here today in front of all of you is honestly crazy. The past four years of high school have gone by so fast. It seems as if yesterday I was walking through the doors of BG as a terrified little sixth grader with crooked glasses on. Now, all of us are moving into the so-called real world. We have been told by our parents, our teachers, and our coaches to stay young and to never grow up because we won't like the work and challenges that come with it. But every time we heard this, we'd brush it off and respond with the, cl with the classic, school is hard work and boring, and I can't wait to have so much more freedom when I'm older. But now, that time is finally here. We are graduating and have grown into a group of young men and women. We are no longer the annoying freshmen who feel like we'll be, in stu we'll be stuck in high school forever. It is our turn to make a change in the world and leave our mark in the history books. I think we can all agree we did not er expect our senior year to go the way it did. We all had talked about how our senior prank would go down in history and how our senior trips were going to be the best time of our lives, even if the buses were 100 degrees on the way there. We dreamed about making a sectional run in baseball, breaking records in outdoor track, playing softball for the first time, and putting on one last show on BG stage in the annual, in the annual spring play. Instead, COVID-19 had other plans. We had many events taken away from us that were supposed to be memories we'd cherish forever. We held on to the hope of returning for the last few weeks of school until it was official that our senior year was over, or at least over in the sense that we could no longer be with each other. We proceeded to finish our senior year on Zoom calls and constantly texting on our mind. At first, we didn't think much of it, but when April rolled around, and then May, and then finally June, we realized what we had lost and missed out on. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love sleeping in every day of quarantine, but I would give that up any day to be in school with this graduating class. This virus may have cut our senior year short, but it does not define us. We have made countless memories over the past four years, for some of us even the past seven. We journeyed together through thick and thin and made our way here today. This is just the beginning of our lives. We have learned, we have learned and been taught so much during our time at NDBG. Whether it's remembering that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, or showing compassion to our peers when they need it most, we have been taught so much up to this day. Along with many math equations and life lessons, we have grown tremendously over the past four years. For many of us, we are just thankful for the glow up. We all look back on those pictures from sixth grade to ninth grade, and then look at all of us now. All we can say is thank the Lord. On a more serious note, we have grown together as a family. Whether it was a tragic event such as the field house burning down or helping up an injured teammate, we have shown love, maturity, and a great sense of resilience. All of the obstacles thrown our way over the years have not been great enough to stop this graduating class. We have stood by each other in countless situations, whether it was on the field or in the hallways, whether it was Mr. Moran strictly talking to us after countless lunch periods, swearing that he loved us despite our decisions, 
or Mrs. Tebow giving out chocolate chip cookies after super fun cloud classes, the, the relationship that the class of 2020 had with each other and the faculty was one of a kind. There was love, respect, and tons of fun memories. Although we have made it here today with our own hard work and perseverance, we could not have done it with the support of the people in our lives. First off, I want to give a big shout out to Quizlet, an absolute lifesaver. On a more serious note, I want to thank each and every one of our families. Without you guys, none of us would be here right now. Your decision to send us to this school was such a blessing. Thank you all for driving us to sports games, bringing us to banquets, supporting us on the field and stage, studying with us, and providing for us our entire lives. Next, I want to thank the teachers and staff. You guys made it possible for us to learn in a fun and safe environment. You went out of your way to help us and support us when we needed it most, whether it was staying after for extra help writing an essay or just listening to what we thought was a midlife crisis. You were there. You gave support and love, when we, and we truly appreciate that. This graduating class was one of a kind. The memories we created were unforgettable. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any other class can say that they have the best musical chair contestant to walk BG. Nace managed to somehow win every single game of musical chairs from ninth grade to senior year. Along with this, I don't think anyone in the history of our school was told to shave more than Austin was. I promise you that every day when I walked into lunch with him, he didn't make it five steps before Mr. Moran said, Austin, get over here. Our senior class had some of the best actors, singers, runners, athletes, and students to come through the school. Although one thing I, can't, I still can't figure out is how our senior class managed to lose a game of tug of war against the juniors. Now, if you ask me, I think Mrs. Tebow's rope was rigged or something. Our senior class was always finding ways to have fun, even if we got yelled at for it. Whether it was walking to church in the freezing cold, winning dodgeball tournaments, shout out black team, hiding our phones in the hall, or acting out Macbeth in, Miss, in Mr. Biggs's class, let's just say it was never boring. As we are all here together today for possibly the last time, it all begins to sink in, what we have accomplished and what we are leaving behind. Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons was our home for the past four years. So much of that is about to change. Some of us are off to college only a few minutes from our home. Others have made the decision to attend college in Kansas. Regardless, we will be on our own now. We have to do our own laundry, wake up on time, meet new people, and even experience new cities. This can be a very scary time for many of us, especially because we are unsure of what the future holds. Regardless of what comes next, the class of 2020 will be ready. Through the lessons and strategies we have obtained at Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons, we are prepared for the next steps in our lives. We have seen what happens when we put our minds together and help the community. We have witnessed the greatness of teamwork and the joy of winning when we play as one. We experienced sorrow and struggle and learned ways to fight and push through it. We have experienced success, the wonderful feeling when all that hard work pays off. Whether you know it or not, the school is where all these things began, and these people are the ones that stood by our side through everything. This senior class is incredible. We will truly be remembered for so much more than the class that graduated during COVID-19. We have left our mark on this school, and we are so blessed to be able to do it together. The fight that we have shown not only during this time, but throughout our high school career is unmatched. Our resilience and strength show the world that we are so ready for the next chapter of our lives. Leaving here today will be difficult and emotional, but our high school journeys have come to an end. As we go our separate ways, I want to share with you six words to live by that my grandfather taught me when I was young. Follow these and you will find success in following your dreams. Be good, be strong, and try hard. Thank you. I spent my entire childhood wanting to grow up. I couldn't wait to be the big kid on the playground. I couldn't wait to begin middle and then high school. I couldn't wait to drive. Growing up has many benefits, but it also comes with much more responsibility. If I had known how difficult the next level would be, I would have taken more time to focus on the moment rather than down the road. I'm sure many of you feel this way. Being older certainly has its benefits, but there will always be aspects of life that you can never return to. Now, I'm not saying that you should dwell on the past, but rather don't always look to the future. There aren't enough todays for you to always be thinking about tomorrow. I know this sounds odd coming from a 17 year old, but I know you've all heard your parents say, I wish I was your age again, at least 3 million times as you've grown up. So make sure you take the time to enjoy your age. My four years of high school have been the best of my life, but at the same time, I'm so excited for what awaits me in college. And I know that many of you feel the same way, ready to move on to the next chapter of your life, whether that's school, the military, the workforce, or taking care of family. The past few months have been especially difficult, not seeing friends or loved ones for so long and being stuck inside. We've missed many of our senior year activities. Because of COVID-19, the future is no longer as certain as it was only a few months ago. We need to take a lesson from this and not lose sight of today as we look to the future because the future has its own plans that it's not going to tell us. 
Today is the only day that you can control. We've all lost sleep thinking about mistakes in the past or what the future holds. It's only natural. I'm still haunted by some embarrassing memories of middle school, wondering why I did those cringy things. Those memories are there as reminders and lessons that show how we've grown as people. There are small scars on our memory, like physical ones that are always there telling us not to run with scissors again. But at the same time, I hope those scars haven't kept you from using scissors altogether. Bad memories are the same way. Own and learn from your mistakes. Don't shy away from them. If you say the wrong thing to somebody, are you never going to talk to them again? If you blow one game for your team, will you quit? Or will you look them in the eyes, apologize, and move forward, learning from what you did wrong? I have never met a person who has gone through life without making a mistake, and I doubt I ever will. Life is full of knockdowns and hard times, which is no news to us. However, it's up to us to stand back up, look at the new scar that we have, and move forward in our lives having learned this new lesson. The loss of a huge part of our senior year has presented challenges and disappointments. One way to help stand back up faster and stronger is to look for the positive in a seemingly all negative situation such as this. I know that I have personally had much more time with my family and pets and that I've been able to play Xbox almost every night with the boys, which I rarely had time for before. Always try to find positives like these in the face of hardship, both now and in the future. I also believe that this pandemic is our opportunity to make a difference in the world. There are so many older, wise people who thought they had seen enough to be prepared for anything. And then this happened. The world is turned on its head right now, and it's our chance to take control and make it ours. Are you going to side with the status quo and live your life by the rules of a pre-COVID age where everything was so certain? Or are you going to open your eyes and be willing to change your perspective to be part of the solution and forward progress? The choice is up to every one of us individually. But real change cannot be made by just one individual. It will take many of us working together. Think about your growth over time. The person you are today has been formed over many years by your family, friends, teachers, and everybody who, have, who you have built a bond with. That's why I am so thankful for all these amazing individuals that have been here to support us during our time at BHBL. If only one of these influential people were missing, we would not be the exact person we are today. The same is true of real change. Every person that does not participate changes the outcome. We, the graduating class of 2020, are moving on from a huge chapter in our lives and into another. The book of your life is only just beginning, but it will be filled with character development, celebrations, and challenges. Make sure you use the book to your advantage and look back to learn. Enjoy the process of writing your story, but never try to give up on a chapter and skip on to the next. It's your book. Make sure that you are the one who's doing the writing. But as you do, I encourage you to collaborate with others. And most importantly, you're going to get knocked down time after time. It's up to you to get back up and keep writing. Congratulations to all of us, the senior class of 2020. I can't wait to see how we all change the world. I'd like to start off by saying how proud I am of our class for our decision to donate $4,000 of our class fund to the Regional Food Bank. This fund was the result of seven years of saving and hard work to pay for our prom and senior trip. And the fact that we were able to come together, recognize need and find that generosity collectively brings me so much joy and hope. I'm so appreciative of our class's willingness to put others above ourselves, despite how difficult it is for all of us to give up on things we've been looking forward to for so long. I originally wanted to speak today without even mentioning the pandemic in an attempt to preserve the escapism that I've been relying on to cope with everything. But in the end, that is naive. In reality, we will always be the class of 2020 whose senior year was cut in half by a bubble disaster. Graveling may be easier, but acceptance feels so much more relieving. It is necessary to take the time to mourn the loss of the climactic moments of our high school careers. However, it is just as important to take the time to reflect on and appreciate what we were able to gain from our time. The friends, relationships, mentorships, and experiences that we've acquired during our journey were not in vain. 
they were fundamental and formative for all of us. It's important to remember that the cancellation of our senior year's second semester does not negate the previous 25 semesters that we've been through. If anything, it shows us how much they meant to us. However, I now find myself outside of that system, missing the structure, the teachers, my friends, even the classes I didn't like as much. Taking a step back has given me the chance to look at what I have and what I don't have, and has forced me to realize my priorities. What do I truly care about? What do I miss? What don't I miss? This is a time for all of us to recenter ourselves and reflect to understand what we truly want in life. And what better time for that than right before we set out for our next step in life. In other words, this is a beautiful opportunity for us to find and care for ourselves, to find others that mean the most to us, to explore the hobbies and interests, to prepare ourselves for the future. There's a time and place for doom and gloom. This ceremony, for example, why should we treat it like a funeral service when we could be celebrating the things that bring us the most joy? Remembering our years in school with fondness and appreciation can give us this joy. As I look back at my time in Duanesburg, I realize how remarkable the readiness of the teachers and staff to go out of their way for us has been. I've talked to many of the teachers about the things that you've all put up with, and your patience and determination blows my mind. Despite how difficult it may be, you're always so willing to be there for us. Being in such a small district gives us the ability to connect with our teachers much more intimately and thoughtfully, and I think this is part of what makes our school so special. For me, Mr. Hopkins, Mr. Gauthier, and Mr. Detondo especially showed their spirit and passion for teaching, giving up their free periods to allow me to explore the topics I'm most passionate about with independent study classes. I'm sure all of us have stories about the times when a teacher has gone above and beyond for us. The sense of community and kinship is everywhere in Duanesburg. Everyone is so connected, friendly, and accepting in our school. And there's a sense of comfort that exists nowhere else. We should cherish the time we've spent here, the people we've gotten to meet, the experiences we've had, because they are beautiful and unique and irreplaceable. All the time and hard work we've put in, all the friendships and personal growth, all the money we've raised, none of these things were wasted, nor were they ever made less valuable. As we move forward in our lives and move past this chapter, and as we encounter the trials and pains of life, we should remember that we weathered the pandemic together, and we were able to muster the wherewithal to make the most of it. If we can get through this, what can't we do?